Hey traders, checking into the stock market today. So we had a bit of a morning dump. We had a solid bounce midday. And then as hourly consolidation was underway from there, we had bearish news come out of the Bank of England where paraphrasing, but essentially said, you know, the emergency operation that we were doing was very temporary and we're gonna be done by the end of the week. And so the market, which is currently addicted to the narrative of wanting to see the central banks turn more dovish, had its hopes and dreams dashed a bit. And you can see the volume that came in and then just the waterfall drop straight back to the low of the day. So your anti-FOMO for these trends, I should say your anti-FOMO for the markets are these trends. And so you see this move this morning and oh man, big bounce. And it was a solid bounce. But if you miss this move or if you are bullish, patience is key when you're in a downtrend. Because we saw a, 10, a 2% bounce and then we gave it all back. We only established one 15 minute support on the way up. So we didn't establish a ton of support, but your anti-FOMO is, if we're gonna see any kind of notable bottom, we have to confirm an hourly trend change. So after the morning bounce took place, you know, an aggressive bear is looking for hourly consolidation to take shape and a patient bull is saying, all right, well, I'll look for an entry on the hourly higher low. And we know a five minute trend change back to the bulls is the indication that an hourly higher low is being set. And we just didn't see that. We just tried to, this consolidation right here, no red flags, no red flags, there's your red flag. So no hourly trend change to the bulls, I'm staying bearish. I'm keeping a bearish mindset here and on it every day. You know, I had no interest in bullish trades today and I'm looking bearish as long as we're in hourly downtrends. And with CPI numbers, tomorrow we've got PPI numbers and FOMC minutes coming out. So some potential volatility there, but we're teetering on the, the edge right now and we can definitely see things get ugly. Keep in mind that right now, it seems like things have been ugly because bears have had control far more often than bulls over the last month, but we're not extreme on any time frame. I have no idea what the reaction to the CPI numbers are going to be, but I do know that we can absolutely see a lot more downside. We're not oversold on the weekly. We're not oversold on the daily. We're not oversold on the four hour. We're not oversold on the hourly. We're not oversold on the 15 minute. We're not oversold on the five minute. You get the idea. We're not oversold on any time frames. And we know that when things get ugly and when I look to step in front of the speeding bear train to look to play a bounce or to make some long entries, it's when you're at historical RSI levels on a bunch of time frames. Give me the daily, the four hour, the hourly with RSI all 25 and under and I'm starting to get interested, but we're not even close to that happening. So just be aware that we can always go lower. Just keep that in the back of your mind with whatever decisions you're making as a trader. And for me, it's been just focusing as a bear, whether it's waiting for a 15 minute lower high. I tried for a 15 minute lower high today and I was stopped out break even. And that is a okay. I believe I was attempting for that right around here. And then I just, I was away for most of the, mid, the day midday, so I didn't do much else aside from that. But if, if it's a big enough bounce, then we just scout the hourly consolidation as a bear. So that is my mindset until I get some conviction from the bulls to be looking in the other direction. And the other thing that has me a little bit cautious here, as I've been mentioning, you know, we're teetering on the edge because we've got our fear low, which is still a double bottom on the S&P 500, but we're watching these major sectors. And if XLF, XLV, and IWM join QQQ, QQQ is captain of Team Bear, dropping to lower lows each of the last couple of days. If these other sectors join QQQ on Team Bear, and we have the kind of day where, you know, we see all major sectors down two to 3%, then we're going to be looking for the VIX to be shooting back up in a potential weekly bull flag heading back up towards the 36 to 39 range. Granted, We've been rejecting from this range many times over the last year, but it just has me a little bit cautious. And again, I, I just have no interest in being an aggressive bull at these levels, especially with the unknown fundamentals that are going to be coming out this week. And then we got earnings right after that. Earnings to end this week for the financial sector, and then we'll have earnings for the tech sector towards the end of the month. And that's going to be a big gamble as well. So I'm just remaining very patient and reminding myself that we can always go lower. When the bottom is set, we will change the hourly trend. We will change the daily trend. We will see follow through. We'll see bull volume. We'll see all the signals. 
The dollar has to lose weekly EMA 12. I cannot be a bull as long as weekly EMA 12 is support on the dollar. So that's a major factor for me as well. We started daily consolidation today on the dollar, but it's news reaction led to very little bear follow through. And we're right back up at the highs of this bounce. So at this point, it's either going to be CPI that leads to the daily lower high or CPI that leads to a higher high, in my opinion. And we're just going to be waiting for that Thursday morning. Semiconductor still very weak. NVDA dropped down to the lower low. SMH, the ETF, even weaker. Look at the increasing bear volume. So we have the NASDAQ leading the S&P 500 down. We have the semiconductors leading the NASDAQ down. And that's our tier of relative weakness with semiconductors being one of the weakest sectors right now. And we look at where we stand and we're going back and saying, all right, well, we haven't been at these levels since November, 2020. And that is almost two year lows. And we look at NVDA and same thing. Although actually I take that back. We're still at some levels from 2021, but still very weak. And again, you look at this chart and say, well, NVDA can bounce 10 percent from here and still form a daily lower high. So that's what I'm talking about, about, you know, no rush, no FOMO as a bull, because it's going to take a while to change these trends. When you're in a bull market, it takes so long to go from an uptrend on the monthly, weekly, daily time frame, and then to shift and lose those trends. Because if you lose the daily uptrend, you just zoom out and scout a weekly higher low. You lose the weekly uptrend, you zoom out and scout a monthly higher low. And we have the exact opposite right now where it's a long road ahead in terms of shifting this momentum. Tesla is in free fall still with a daily stair step drop the last five days, but daily RSI getting real beat up down in the mid twenties. And we're approaching a, a zone with a lot of price action. If you look at 206, 206 to 216 here, we've bounced from this level multiple times and we're re-entering it right now in daily oversold conditions. So bulls are hopeful that some support shows up here. And again, remember our relative weak strength changes to relative weakness at a key resistance rejection. And our relative weakness can potentially change to relative strength at a key support zone. So we look at Tesla divided by QQQ and it fell off a cliff and has been way weaker ever since that resistance rejection. Well, now let's see, can the Tesla divided by QQQ chart give us a monthly higher low here because Tesla bulls defend that support. That remains to be seen, but it's something that aggressive bulls are watching for over the rest of the week, as long as this support is coming into the picture. Still an hourly downtrend here as well, though. High of yesterday, look at the, the wall at 227. High of today rejects by less than a dollar, and then we just roll over from a tightening range into a clear bear break. And of course, the news being a factor there, Elon Musk talking to Putin, whatever that news is, but close near the lows. So 206 to 216 support zone is now in play. Healthcare was a lead bull today. Did we change the hourly uptrend to the bulls? No. We had a nice bounce. Have to break the high of today tomorrow for an hourly uptrend to be intact. Again, the bulls are attempting to defend our base of support. But if that's just a quick lower high and then we roll over, things can get ugly. 12070 key support. XLF is knocking on the door. 3012. Fear lows must hold that level. Otherwise, we're going to have our stronger sectors joining our weaker sector. IWM. Testing the low today. Bulls playing defense and standing out a bit stronger. All about 163.28. Biotech sector benefiting from IWM and XLV strength related sectors there, but never confirmed the hourly uptrend. Gave it all back. Nice double bottom at the end of the day there, but have to break the high of today tomorrow for an hourly uptrend. So change the hourly trends and we'll have a short-term shift. But if we cannot change the hourly trends, the bears stay very confident. As I mentioned, the VIX is up testing its recent high, trying to confirm a weekly bull flag. It's not going to see a big breakout day unless we see all major sectors breaking their recent fear lows. That's the kind of environment, if that happens, where we can see these kinds of days where things accelerate to the downside altogether. But if we're seeing a day like today, where healthcare is up at the high of the day and up half a percent, I forget where it closed, but it was at one point up half a percent. 
while QQQ is weak, that's the kind of environment where the VIX doesn't break out. It needs all major sectors at the lows at the same time to see these big green days. Cannabis is getting absolutely trashed. So one day pop on news, really a one hour pop on news and giving the majority of that back and just getting trashed in this market environment where you know bears say, okay, good, you got a good news headline, but that's not gonna change anything over the next week or two. Maybe it changes something over the next bunch of months, but they jumped all over it. And it keeps affirming the take profit and to sell pops mindset. And I was in that mindset and I participated in that. That's because that's what the sector has been giving us time and time again. And until that changes, we're gonna keep seeing it play out. Uranium bulls playing some defense today. Tomorrow's a pretty important day for CCJ on this hourly trend change attempt. If we confirm the hourly trend change, it's a daily hold of support of 2466. So keep an eye out for that. Also just a note, put out a, a video from Jungle Funk Joey, one of our chart guys, moderators and contributors. And he put out a YouTube video on our channel about trading view alerts, all different kinds, exponential moving averages, price levels, RSI levels, I think eight different kinds of alerts and just a little how to in terms of how to set those up. So check out our YouTube channel and it's one of the most recently uploaded videos. But CCJ bulls need the hourly trend change to defend 2466 support, trying to fend off confirming the weekly downtrend. It's again showing us relative strength comparative to the broader market, but we know that can only last so long if the broader market keeps dropping to lower lows. So again, with where we're standing right now, looking out over the next few days, the bulls need help. They have to see a, a bullish reaction to CPI or we're going to dump. They have to see a bullish reaction to the financial sector earnings or it's just going to be another weight driving the price down. Silver giving back the majority of the move. Anything above 1796 is a higher low, but lots of space for a daily lower high to be the result from the bounce from there. Oil is looking for a daily higher low. Hourly oversold conditions led to a bounce, but never changed the trend. We did give it back, keeping an eye out for four hour oversold conditions if we keep dropping back notably. Inventory report is tomorrow. Natural gas had the daily support level hold, at least initially. Have to break 710 if it's gonna be meaningful. And other than that, it's just bear confidence. Bears have to get punched in the mouth. And the bulls are not doing that. And so the bulls need help from fundamental news data, data. And that's really what the hopes boil down to at this point in the short term. Let the hourly and daily downtrend be your guide. Let them be your bias. What is my bias today? Let's check the trends. What's the weekly? What's the daily? What's the hourly doing? Are we at historical bounce levels on RSI on multiple time frames? No? Okay, then all I care about is the trend. Do good things. Thanks for watching. This guy's getting close. Probably another day or two, I'll try and capture it. Are you being a wacko face? Whoa. Kale, lettuce, some kind of Chinese spinach, cabbage, radish, onions.